Welcome to another episode of Hidden Heritage, where we follow the breadcrumbs to discover more evidence of who were the only American Indians that inhabited the Americas and that are still here till this day. Now, before we dive into the rabbit hole of truth, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down below. If you are already subscribed, welcome back to the channel and thank you once again for your unwavering support. Please continue to like, comment, and share so more people can witness the truth. Let's dive in. Origin of the name America, where overhead the mournful bow, side with her, then sigheth now. She told this tale and went her way, like a live mist, so thin and gray. Forgotten was her prophecy, despised, forever gone was she. But oh, time saw a burial there, where Helder tore her hoary hair. God rest her soul, wherever she be, the sweet girl sleeps so peacefully. Are we ready? We're ready. Here is just one example before we move forward of what America looked like in person. Or Amarique or Amarique. And we're going to break it down. So let's get into it. All right. So we're going to start off with the highlighted portion and work our way down. The question to be decided is whether the word Amerique or Amerique des designated a part of the ter terra firma discovered by Cristoforo Colombo or Christopher Columbus on his fourth and last voyage to the New World was known to the great navigator. So he was not lost. All right. He was not lost. He was a great navigator and his brother Bartholomew was a cartographer, a maker of maps. That was his profession, Bartholomew's profession. So between a great navigator, right? Bartholomew, a map maker and the Moors from Europe and Africa helping Columbus, right? He was not lost. All right. He, they knew exactly where they was trying to go. And it was not over in Hindustan or or Bharat, because that's a whole nother uh, direction. Anyway, we're going to keep reading. So Christopher Columbus was known as a great navigator and consequently could have been repeated by him or by the companions of this voyage. There is no certainty of this, for the word is not found in the very brief account he has left us. But as the origin of the word Amerique has been until now an enigma, in spite of different interpretations of it that have been given, and as Vespucci, that, that fake dude, uh, Amerigo Vespucci, who people try to say that it came from him. We're going to get into that more as well. But listen what it says. It says Vespucci had nothing to do with this name. It was entirely unknown to him. And we're going to have like more receipts as we keep going. The fact that the inventor of the word Americi or America being a printer and bookseller in a small town hidden in those mountains. It is perhaps well to review the facts and to show where the lies the greatest probability for the true solution of the origin of the word America which dominates alone a hemisphere, the Western Hemisphere. 
All right, so we're going to go to the blue portion, right? It says, the great object of the desires and researches of Colombo and his company was finding the gold mines. And of these, the inhabitants, all right, had much to relate. They led Colombo to another village whose inhabitants wore golden mirrors round their necks. Whose inhabitants wore golden mirrors around their necks. At the bottom it says a native savage of America wearing like a golden mirror around his neck. All right, so we're going to continue reading where it says, um, after the blue, it says, These Indians named several places where mines of gold existed. The last named being Veracroqua, Veraca, 25 leagues distance of the coast. So the Indians... The inhabitants named the stuff themselves so it wasn't European influence that came up with the name Amerique or America right they just took the indigenous Indian name and used it for something else but the European vocabulary did not stretch that far all right, for them to just come up with Vespucci Amerigo nonsense, right? They just stole the name from the locals, the inhabitants, the Indians. All right, so we're going to start reading here where it says, It is well known with what tenacity the Indians attach themselves to all their surroundings and the Amerique or Amerique range forms the highest chain of the mountains of mountains in their country of the Carcass and Ramas Indians the average being around 3,000 feet high so the, the whole place was was Amerique uh, or America or whatever the case may be so let's see what else we're gonna read right here where it says Colombo says the Indian named right he said that the Indians named several localities rich in gold but he does not give the names in his very curtailed account, contending himself with citing the name of the province in Chiamba. But it is highly probable that this name, Amerique or Amerique, was often pronounced by the Indians in answer to the pressing demands of the Europeans of the expedition. The eagerness for gold from the Europeans was such among the first navigators that it formed their chief preoccupation everywhere. And it is almost certain that to their continual questions as to the place where the gold was found that the Indians war as ornaments and if you want i can let us know in the comments we'll send you a whole video where the indians wore a lot of gold all right so let's see 
So the war, it is almost certain to that their continual questions as the place where gold was found that the Indians wore as ornaments. The reply would be from Amarique, this word signifying the most elevated and conspicuous part of the interior and upper country, the distinguishing feature of the province of Cambia. We're going to read right here where it says, We may suppose that Colombo and his companions on their return to Europe when relating their adventures would boast of the rich gold mines they had discovered through the Indians of Nicaragua and say they lay in the direction of Amarique. This would make popular the word Amarique as the common designation of that part of the Indies in which the richest mines of gold in the New World were situated. Okay, so let's see what else we have. The name Amarique had been heard not as that of a man, but of a country of an undetermined portion of the terra firma of the New World and it was accepted without difficulty, no attention being paid to the mistake of the printer and bookseller of St. D, whose pamphlet was probably unknown in Spain. And they're talking about that Amerigo Vespucci guy. Watch. So there can be little doubt that the word Amerique was not only known but popularized to a certain extent in the seaports of Spain, Portugal, and the Indies, or it would not have been thus at once accepted by universal consent without discussion. This is all the more probable from the fact that Hila Camilus, I guess that's the real name of Vespucci, right? Beside the marked altercation of the first name, Alberico, disregarded the rule which has always been followed in naming countries. So this is where we uh, started from the beginning reading that poem for the woman, right? By giving the first name instead of the family name of his hero. He should have called the new world Vespucia or Vespucia. Okay. The Christian name of an ordinary man, right, is never ever used to designate a country. but only that of an emperor, king, queen, or prince. So the aboriginal or inhabitants or the Indians that came up with the word, the Europeans stole that word and applied it to the country but the country has to be named after someone with prestige, all right? It has to be an emperor, a king, a queen, or prince, all right? So this is where we track down the Amarique, right? But let's go back up. Again, the new world would have been named Vespusia or Vespuccia if this guy Amerigo Vespucci had anything to do with the naming of America. However, 
the Europeans took the Aboriginal word, the Indian word, right? And they applied it to who? They applied it to an emperor or a king or queen or prince. And whenever we try to lock down this word Amerique, right? It's or Amerique. It always comes up to either a queen or king or emperor. Let's check it out. Oh, if you made it as far into the video, thank you so much. Um, please like, share, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and turn on post notifications. You'll be informed of our next upcoming video. Let's see who they who they um, represent when they talk about Amerique or Amerique K. Let's roll. Oh, sorry, I'm almost forgot. Okay, so the fact that the Europeans applied an Aboriginal name to the an Aboriginal person to represent America or Amerique, right? It says, but only that of an emperor or king or queen that they name or prince that they name countries after. Thus, we say Straits of Mag Magellan, Vancouver's Island, Tasmania, Van Damon's Land, etc. While we have, on the other hand, Louisiana, right? It's in America. Uh, someone named after, what's it called? Someone high, high, higher up, you know, with prestige. Carolina, Georgia, Maryland, Philippines, Victoria, etc. There is no exception to this rule in the case of Christopher Columbus and that Vespucci just giving the name to an or ordinary man. So let's see who the, the Europeans took the Aboriginal word of Amerique, uh, Amerique and applied it to. They have to apply the name to someone of prestige. A king, queen, emperor, empress, prince. Right? Let's see. All right. So, again, here is a personification of Amerique. Right? Again, the locals came up with the word and they was using it as like a gold mine or the highest point of a mountain. But the Europeans stole their original inhabitant, aboriginal Indian name and applied it to a country which has to be named after someone of prestige, an emperor, empress, a king, queen, prince, right? And every time we pull up an example of Amerique, we find someone in high regard with copper color, brown skin, an Indian, all right? So here's one uh, representation of Amerique. And look how she's dressed um, from head to toe. She has uh, feathers, the hoop earrings, right? Let's see another one. Here is another depiction, right? This is what she would look like in real time, right? Another example of Amerique. All right, so we come to this guy right here. You see the bottom with the clock, right? And her feet, one foot. Now let's, let's scroll, right? And we read, it says an empire, right? An empire of America, an empire. So they had to apply the Aboriginal name of uh, uh, Amerique or America to to someone of prestige. That's the rules. No exception, right? And this is in the 1700s, 1800s. This 1864 to 1827, you see, that's going to come up again corrected. But 
That way you know it's a typo and you'll see how we connect the, the breadcrumbs and the dots and we go down the rabbit hole of truth. So you see what they mean when they talk about an emperor, an empress, a king or a queen uh, or a prince or a princess, right? So again, you see an empire. So they applied it to someone of high regard. And again, you see the, the clock and all that. So now we're going to check out the, the receipts and see what she looks like and see how they described her. All right. So we're going to read a little bit more of the receipts before. So we have all the context in front of us when we take a look at the Indian queen or Amarik, right? In addition to the above, one can also cite another identical clock in the, uh, this guy and the genes, this guy again, but remember the year 1764 to 1824. Remember, it was a typo before, right? A clock of an Indian should be queen, but they cannot apply it to just a, a typical huntress, right? They, can't apply, they cannot apply the name America to just someone you know, in low regard, like a huntress. It has to be the empire of a queen or king or emperor or empress with one of the number of designs on the theme, right? And they try to downgrade her again with the savage, right? But we're going to see what savages look like, you know, in high regard with pearls and jewels and, and, and nice clothes and everything like that. All right, so now we skip down to Le Indian, right? And then it says La Emeric, which portrays a negress, all right? So now we know they're not talking about a dark-skinned European or dark-skinned uh, Siberian or dark-skinned Mongolian or dark-skinned Russian or dark-skinned Europe European, nothing. They are applying to one type of person in the Americas, the Indians, La Amerique, La Negras, right? With an alligator at her feet is of the same design as here, but now the exotic personification of America. One type of people, all right? Again, here's the the clock with her feet. And then we're going to scroll up to see what she looks like. Keeping in mind that she kind of looks European. However, you saw that they described her as a negress. All right. So let's zoom in and check out her hair. Check out her hair. As you saw earlier, as I showed you. Uh, the lamb Amarik, and you saw the, the the hair, the different, you know, the distinct hair, right? That's different from a Siberian. They got the straight hair. The European got the straight hair, right? The Asians got the straight hair. The Russians got the straight hair. But this type of hair is different from them. So that's how you know, just how with the negatives. And we got more. So I just want to zoom in real quick so we can apply it all the context to the situation. You see her hair, right? Very woolly, right? And and coarse, right? And again, she has the pearls, right? She got the pearl earrings, uh, 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 pearls around her arm, gold band around her wrist. She got the bow, right? All right here. And we got we got a little bit more of Amarique so we can show you. And the gold around her ankles as well. All right. So we have another um, personification of the empire, La Amarique, the La Amerique Empire, right? And you can see the phenotype skin complexion. They have feather headdress, right? 
They have feather around their arms, gold on that um, gold crown, like gold pendant in their crown, in her crown, gold around the uh, other uh, persons on the left um, neck, right? Gold earrings, pearl, uh, pearl earrings, pearl necklace, right? High regard. Even the, the, the quiver of bows holding the arrows, uh, the, yeah, the, ar the arrows, the quiver of arrows, uh, I'm sorry, it's gold as well. And then you see right here, La Amarique. And we have the receipt to prove that they're referring to one specific group of people in the world. All right. So we cannot look at this picture and say, well, we got Asians that look like that today, or we got Europeans that look like that today, or Russians or Siberians or Mongolians or whomever, right? Only applies to one group in the entire world, and we are going to prove it. So let's go. All right, so here's the receipt of receipts of receipts that we're talking about only one group of people in the entire world. That that the land, the India, India country, if you need a need video on that, we can send that to you, a proof today that this is an India country. But the Europeans took the, the word of the aboriginals and applied it to the country of America pertaining to someone in high regard, a, a, a king or queen, empress, emperor, prince, princess, right? And you see where it says African American history graphics collection, African American history prints and watercolors. All right, that misnomer, that disrespectful misnomer applies to only one group of people in the entire planet right the copper color the only american indians right the only american indians in the entire world the only indians look like this right look like them there is no mistaken this is the truth, right? This is them. It's nobody else. It's only them, right? Proof, La Amérique, and then you had the African-American history, prints and watercolors, right? There are only one type of Indians in the world, and you're looking at them. There's only one type of Americans in the world, and you're looking at them. And they are not black Americans, right? Because everyone else are not Americans, so they don't need to hyphenate who they are. There's no such thing as a black Indian. They're just Indians or American Indians. <laughs> That's it. Right? And you're looking at them. But we're not done. We still got more receipts. And I'm going to need y'all to pay attention. All right? Because they when they when they put these these breadcrumbs out there, man, I, it'd be like eight months later. And I'd be like, what? What's this? Ugh, what the hell? And I got to bring it back up. Watch this. Please share this stuff, man. Please share this stuff. Please like the videos. If you're looking at it, like it, share it, please. Watch this. Here is another representation of La Amérique. And this time, he's an emperor, a king. Watch this. Right? So we scroll down. He has the arrow. Look at his facial features, skin complexion, body type. Look at his hair. Okay, he's not, uh, it's not a, like the European, they would always depict them with like straight hair. Same with the Mongolians and Siberians, right? The Russians, 
straight hair, and white as snow, right? But look at this depiction of this king, of this emperor. La Amarique. And then you scroll down, he has a bow and arrow, and look what is by his feet. His scepter, his king's scepter, inside of his crown. Right? Inside of his crown. And look, he's standing on a book. In my opinion, I'm thinking they're trying to tell us, like, hey, what's the easiest way to hide the truth from an Indian, right? You put it in a book. I guess him standing in the book represents us not learning anything about ourselves. But as you can see, La Amarique, this representation is that of a a man, right? A king, an emperor. When we just saw the representation of a woman in high regard, and you see he has a king's scepter and it's on the ground with his crown standing on a book. Let's buckle in because we still have more to show about this Amarique. And we need y'all to see it. Oh, I almost forgot the year. This was, it said New Voyages to North America, 1707. This is a typo. The Roman numerals is a seven. With the V11, that's a seven. So it'll be the year 1707. Again, look at him. Crown, scepter, king, emperor. So, you have to stay with us right now, right? We have a picture of the inhabitants, right? And I want you guys to look at them, right? Dark skin and his hair can't see him from the back, right? But we got something. We found what he looks like. And you're going to be blown away. So let's go down to the bottom. You have the receipt. It said New Amsterdam and New York or New York. In Am Amarik. See that right there? Amarik. And then we're going to track them down. I'm going to try to put them side by side because you got to look at the necklace, right? You got to look at the pearls around their wrists, upper arms, what they are wearing on their head as far as the woman on the left, right? And then you're going to see the woman on the right look at her hair and how it's uh it's uh like a ponytail back there with braids and then we're gonna see these three people in another picture watch this check them out this is what they look like remember the late the the woman on the far right with the hair with the ponytail and the woman uh with an uh, in the middle what she was wearing on her head and look what the man looks like and again you see indigenous people from new england or new york or e york new jersey delaware and pennsylvania in the 1600s right indigenous people we got another we got another one let's check that out this is them again. We're going to read the receipt. Archives on early Native Americans. Depicted here with woolly hair and deeply hued skin. Resembling only one race on the land. Okay? One race. Look. Alright. Remember what they're wearing. The pearls around their neck pearls around her arm the same type of hair all right same type of hair with the ponytail the woman on the far right and the woman with something on her head and then we see his face right and you see his hair his woolly hair all right we see it we see it this is them 
You see it, right? This was them. Same clothes and everything. And we're still not done. We still have more people to show and what they look like when in regards to Amerique. All right. Let's see. And what they are wearing. So we have a picture of a Amerindian right here. Right. Same concept. Now, let's see. Before we get to the actual reveal, check out the P3 people at the bottom with the dog in the middle, the house, the palm trees, bow and arrow. Let's scroll in. Look how they look. Look at their specific hair type when talking about a Amerindian. Look, all three of them. So it wasn't like a one off, right? So they made sure to pick every last one of them the same type of person. One group of people in the Americas. One type. So let's, now let's reveal what the actual Amerindian looks like. I want y'all to still see that there's the same three people and we scrolling up and look at his face face right let me see if I can zoom in look I'll get I have a better angle let's let's do that the personification of an American Indian Amerindian La Amerique you see what it looks like right with the hoop earrings the feather headdress right the quiver of arrows the bow you got a little scepter or something or could be an arrow I'm not sure All right you got a gold band around his uh, biceps his upper arm he has on um, gold sandals y'all see that right only one group in the Americas. And to prove that it's not just a one-off, like they made a mistake, this is how they depict all of them. So we have two side by side so we can look at the facial features, right? And you can tell they're different, but the same, right? It's like Pepsi and Cola, the same type of same soda, right? But different, but the same, as you can see. I don't I don't know how else to explain it, but they're like the same group of people, but there's two different statues, and you can look at the differences and similarities between the two. Look at the arrow; how it doesn't look exactly the same, but they're similar, right? The headdress. And let's look at the like the like the waistband and everything. Similar but different. The way he's holding the uh, the bow in his left hand, he has more room on the on the on the staff of the bow on the, on the left side than he does on the right. But this is how they would depict the American Indians, the Amerindians, La Amerique. Right? This is them. And we still have, I think, one more to show you so we can really nail it, nail it down. Check out another version of the Empress and look at the children, how they look. Look at the children, how they look. And then look at how she looks with her hair. Man, it's undeniable. You even got the dog on this one, too. Undeniable. Another M 
empress or queen to represent America. <sighs> yep. That'll do it. <laughs> That'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Please kindly like, share, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you'll be informed of our next upcoming episode. Please take care of yourself. Please take care of each other. We'll see you guys on the next episode of American Indian Heritage. Peace out.